Couple Busters! My name is Helen, and I'm engaged to my boyfriend, Alan. He is very sweet to me. But his mother and sister detest me. My mother-in-law didn't like me from the start. And she would criticize me every time that we met. She doesn't want me to marry Alan. And she's doing everything that she can to drive me away. She won't hesitate to backstab me and do awful things to me. But my love for Alan is strong, and I won't let his mother interfere. And Alan's sister, Sarah, she's a single mother raising her son, Michael. Sarah doesn't like me either and will criticize me along with her mother. I was a little concerned about joining a new family that hated me so much, but I still wanted to marry Alan. Alan knew that his mother and sister were mean to me, and he was sick of their behavior. If I need to cut ties with my mother and sister in order for us to be happy, I'll gladly do it. He's such a nice guy! He's the perfect guy for me to marry. So we went ahead with the planning of our wedding, and our wedding day finally arrived. Our wedding venue was a beautiful chapel. The chapel was famous, and celebrities would frequent the chapel for events and ceremonies. On our wedding day, one of the staff said to me, Today, a famous actress is promoting her latest film at this chapel. Really? I'm so excited to have my wedding on the same day as her event! I love her! She's going to attend the event clad in designer clothes and high-end jewelry. Her dress alone is worth thousands of dollars. Wow! I can't wait to see her! I'd love to see such a dress up close! Yes! We'd be so lucky if we're able to get a close look at her in the dress! Is she that famous? I hadn't heard of her until today. It just so happened that on my wedding day, a famous actress was coming to the same place for an event! The wedding staff told us that it wouldn't be a problem because the time of our wedding and the event would not overlap. And so we continued with the wedding preparations. My mother-in-law then came into the room looking happy. Helen, I'm so sorry about what happened to your dress. What do you mean? What happened? My mother-in-law stood there with a creepy smile. It's a shame, but you won't be able to go ahead with the wedding now that your dress is ruined. <laughs> What happened? And why are you laughing? Then my sister-in-law Sarah and her son Michael also came into the room. I'm sorry, Helen. Michael didn't mean to ruin your dress. He's only a child. So you'll forgive him, won't you? I don't understand. What are you talking about? I had no idea what the two of them were talking about. Then Sarah showed me a photo saved in her smartphone. Michael accidentally spilled coke on your white dress! What? Are you sure that it was an accident? The photo showed my dress splashed with coke. It was a lot of coke. Certainly more than Michael can drink in a day. And the dress was soaked! We should cancel the wedding! We can't have you going out in front of our guests in a dirty dress. We don't want the memory of your wedding to be a dirty dress. But you'll forgive Michael, won't you? He's sweet like an angel. And it was an accident. Sorry, Helen. I didn't do it on purpose. It seemed to me that someone spilled coke onto my dress deliberately so that they could have the wedding canceled. All three of them did not look sorry. In fact, they seemed happy with the outcome. I knew that my mother-in-law and sister-in-law didn't like me, 
But were they cruel enough to ruin my dress on purpose? But then I realized that they had made a big mistake. I won't forgive them. Trouble busters. The dress in the photo is not mine. What? Like I said, the dress isn't mine. My dress is more simple in design. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law had spilled coke on a dress that they thought was mine. The dress belonged to someone else. The dress in the photo was very elaborate, and it looked very expensive. If I could afford it, I would have chosen a dress like this one in the photo. I then heard a commotion from the hallway. When I went out into the hallway, I saw the famous actress walking my way! She was more beautiful in person and smelled very nice. I wanted to ask for her autograph. My dress is dirty. What happened? We apologize, but someone spilled a drink on your dress while we weren't looking. I went over to the staff to get information about what was happening. What's happening? Did someone spill coke on that gorgeous dress? That's exactly what happened. How do you know this? I know who spilled the coke on the dress. It was those two women standing over there. I explained to the staff that it was my in-laws that had ruined the dress. The two of them denied it. But I told everyone about the photo saved in Sarah's phone. You showed me the photo on your phone earlier. Your son Michael spilled the coke, right? The staff surrounded Sarah, Michael, and my mother-in-law. What's going on here? Alan, where have you been? There's a lot of drama happening here. So, what's going on? I told Alan about what had happened. As for Sarah and my mother-in-law, they were now being confronted by the actress. My son accidentally went into the room where your dress was and... And he accidentally spilled his coke on your lovely dress. He didn't mean to. They're not very convincing. So your son did this? We're so sorry. It was a mistake. Please accept our apology. It was the first time that I had seen Sarah apologizing to anyone. She's much more likable in front of a famous person. Well, if a child did this and it wasn't on purpose, I suppose that there's no one to blame. Wow, she's so nice. I bet that dress was really expensive. Of course I won't blame your son. He's only a child. But as his parent, I need you to take some responsibility. Oh, but she is going to ask Sarah to take responsibility. Michael, who had been quiet up until that point, then said, I'm sorry for what I've done. My mom and grandma told me to spill coke onto that just because they thought it was Helen's. Michael, what are you saying? Even as a young child, I think that Michael sensed that it would be best for him to tell the truth. Michael then told everyone about what had really happened. I thought that the dress belonged to Helen. My mom and grandma told me that they would give me allowance if I listened to them. I finally understood what had happened. So it wasn't an accident after all. I couldn't believe that they would try to bribe an innocent child with money. Because Michael is still a child, he probably couldn't tell the difference between my dress and the actress's. That's probably why he chose the fancier dress. Oh my goodness! I think I need to know all the details. I can't believe that you would try to blame everything onto an innocent child. That's unforgivable. Oh, oh no. no! Alan's mother and sister were responsible for not only ruining the actress's dress, but also jeopardizing the event. They were taken to a different room by the staff. I can only imagine what the cost of the damages will be. They did this to themselves. 
Have a nice chat! See you never! I guess we had no choice but to start the wedding without them. The two of them were close to tears, and they probably didn't care anymore about whether I married Alan or not. I can't believe that they try to sabotage our wedding by ruining your dress! How immature! And good riddance! They could have come up with a better plan. We went ahead with our wedding without them. It was a lovely wedding. Especially without my dreadful in-laws. After the reception, Alan's mother and sister came back. Alan! Help us! We need to pay back for the dress that we ruined! We also have to pay for the cancellation fees of the event! Well, that's the right thing to do. You need to fix this! We had no idea that the dress belonged to a famous actress! The dress was obviously not mine. I can't afford such a beautiful dress. They were both white! So how much do you need to pay in damages? Look at this! Sarah showed me a document that listed the cost of the damages. That number is so big! How much is this? Yeah, it's hard to tell. I had never seen so many zeros in my life! Wow. It's going to take a lifetime to pay this much. There's no way that we will be able to pay back the entire amount! This is all your fault, Alan! You shouldn't have gotten engaged to Helen! Helen, you should pay for the costs! I asked you not to marry my son, and you went ahead with it against my wishes! That makes no sense! The dress that they had ruined was not a dress that an ordinary person could afford. On top of that, the event was cancelled because of them. So the amount to be paid was huge! Well, good luck paying that all back. I don't consider you to be my family anymore after what you did today. See ya! Wait! Wait! The two of them begged us to help them. But we had no intention of doing that. We left the chapel without ever looking back. Even after that, the two of them tried to get in touch with us to get us to help them. But we said no. The two of them are now busy paying back what they owe to that famous actress. If only they had the decency to deal with things more maturely. It was their fault for mistakenly ruining a famous actress's expensive dress. Because Alan had cut ties with his family, I no longer had to deal with his mother and sister. I wonder how long it's going to take your mother and sister to pay back that actress. I hope that they'll finally realize that they were wrong all along. I hope so. By the way, what happened to Michael? He lives with his father now. I think he is better off with his father than his crazy mother. I agree. I think that he'll be much happier with his father. Ever since our wedding, we haven't been in touch with Alan's mother or sister. They shouldn't have tried to sabotage our wedding in the first place. Alan and I are much happier now that we no longer have to deal with Sarah and her mother. I really do wonder how long it will take them to pay back everything. Trouble Busters. I'm Lucy. Ever since I was born, I've had to use a wheelchair. Thanks to my surroundings, I've enjoyed my life so far. Unfortunately, I'm currently facing the biggest problem of my life. That would be my boss, Aiden. He was transferred to our office six months ago, but he's persistently discriminated against me for being in a wheelchair. He's a trouble monster. I've complained to the higher-ups about it many times, but they always tell me there isn't enough evidence and won't take me seriously. I've been thinking about finding another job, but I haven't been able to go through with it because I have a disability. Pardon me, these are the documents you asked for. Hey Lucy! Coming to work in a wheelchair must have been tough! You haven't run out of fuel, have you? 
Shall I fill it up with regular for you? Seriously? I can move the wheelchair manually, so it's fine. It doesn't have an engine or a fuel tank. What? Why are you being so cold? I'm being nice to you, so you should be thankful! What? Please don't move my wheelchair like that! Ow! What are you doing? You got some pretty good tires! You move really smoothly! What are you going to do if I get hurt? You're going too far even for a joke! Laugh! Huh? There's no way I can laugh at something like this! Ugh! You're such a killjoy! I'm doing you a favor by making sure you don't have to visit clients, you know? So boring! I guess I better go back to work to kill Tang! Who the hell do you think you are? I'm bothered by the way he treats me like this every single day. Whenever anything exceptionally horrible happens, I always go to my best friend Jade to complain. Thank you. She's so kind and always listens to my problems attentively. Whenever we talk, we go to visit an Italian restaurant. What? He touched your wheelchair? Yeah, look at this. I have a bruise on my knee, too. That's more than enough proof. You should report that blue-haired idiot. What do you want about? You know they'll just cover it up as usual. It's so annoying. He's pure evil, that's for sure. Devil! Let's drink while drawing up a plan. Yeah. Welcome! Do you have a table for two? I'm very sorry. We're currently fully seated. If you don't mind waiting, a table should open up in about 30 minutes. Will that be okay? That's fine. Thank you very much. Please, wait over here. Hey, you! Huh? Aiden? My boss turned up right when I was trying to enjoy some time with Jade. He came closer on wobbly legs with a creepy grin on his face. What? Are you here to eat? Who's this rude guy? Oh, this blue hair! Yep, it's him. My boss. Huh? Isn't this restaurant above your pay grade? You got nerve coming here! Sir, I'm afraid I have to point out that you're being rude. Huh? Wait! Are you gonna lecture your customer? No, of course not. But it's unpleasant for the other customers. Oh, shut up! This is all this wheelchair woman's fault! Ugh, he reeks of alcohol. I'm the one troubled by her not being able to work properly! Enough! Why can't you get over it? Are you talking back to me? I've had enough. Please stop. How much do you have to bully me before you're satisfied? Until I'm satisfied! So you acknowledge how badly you've treated her? Yeah, sure! But we're not at work! I can say as much as I want! You're the worst boss! No, you're the worst human! I can't believe people like you exist! What?! Ah! Get out of here! You're in the way! Are you okay? I'm very sorry. I'll go bring a towel. No, I'm fine. Jade's gotten wet too, so I'll go home for now. Understood. I'll be back later. I swear I'll get back at him. Time for trouble busters. Go ahead. Try it if you can. <laughs> we left the restaurant. My boss stayed, and even though the restaurant had a set time limit of two hours, he was there for over four. He ignored warnings from the manager and ended up staying until the restaurant's closing time, when he was the only customer left making a fuss. Sir, we'll be closing soon. Can I bring you the bill? What? You're already closing? It's still early! I'm very sorry. This is the bill. 
You were really rude. So I expect that there's a discount. Huh? You're kidding! This is too expensive! Huh? Is something the matter? Yeah, something's the matter! Why does it say $4,000? I think that's an acceptable amount. Huh? Explain yourself! You stayed beyond the set time limit of two hours, so a penalty of $1,500 was applied. You caused trouble for the other customers, so a further $1,500 penalty was added. The meal and the wine is $1,000. Don't give me that crap! This is illegal! We have flyers posted all over the restaurant a warning of the time limit. What kind of restaurant is this? Call the owner! I'll give them a good lecture. The lady in the wheelchair from earlier is our owner. Huh? She took over responsibilities for this restaurant from her father. She often comes to eat here herself. You're joking! You're bluffing! No BS! What? Either way, this bill is ridiculous! No, we've abided by the law when making our rules. We'll need you to pay the bill, or... What? I'm only paying $1,000! Then I'll have to rely on the law. Go ahead! Prepare yourself! Yeah! My boss paid only $1,000 and left the restaurant, pleased with himself. Manager reported the incident to me and we proceeded to take care of it with lawful means. The CEO at my company heard about it and my boss was called out into the CEO's office. Aiden, what did you do? Sorry! I had some trouble with the restaurant. I was a bit drunk. Sorry! Be serious! You're being sued by an employee for your actions! Huh? Recordings of you pouring wine on an employee and verbally abusing her have been sent to the HR team. Were you treating her like that this whole time? Uh, no. This is all true. You're fired! What? No! The CEO, please wait! I owned the Italian restaurant, so I had the CCTV footage. And I sent the footage to the company I work for. There were voice recordings too, so they couldn't tell me that there wasn't enough evidence. I pressed charges against my boss for assault, defamation, etc, etc, and sued him. I won the court case and my boss lost his job. Considering everything he had done up in town now, he deserved it. If anything, it came too late. I was able to work in a much more comfortable environment without Aiden there. Good for you. In one way, we're lucky he poured wine on us when we were here. We really are, but I feel bad that you were dragged into my mess too. I'm sorry. It's okay. Those clothes only cost me like three dollars. <laughs> It feels so good to be free of him. But now that you don't have anyone to complain to me about, we won't be coming here as much. Oh, that's true. Huh? No, we don't have to come here to complain. Don't you have anything surprising to talk about? Oh, well, the other day when I was waiting for a train. Yeah? I was surprised by the train whistle and jumped five meters. That's not a surprising story. You're exaggerating about five meters though, aren't you? Today I went to visit the restaurant with Jade and instead of complaining, we were laughing our asses off. I realize that the beer tastes better when we're laughing. Trouble busters. My name is Jade. I live happily with my husband Adam and our daughter Lucy. Everything would be perfect if that woman didn't exist. The world doesn't work the way we want it to. I tried looking for advice on the internet, but nothing seems to work. The problem I'm talking about is... Nope, not a cockroach. My live-in mother-in-law. It seems that bullying me is her hobby. 
What's up with that hair color? It's embarrassing. You're Adam's wife. You should be more aware of that. You're useless. I'm really sorry, but this is my natural hair color. It's a wonderful lime green, right? I never thought I'd be bullied about my appearance instead of my housework skills. Who is it that said, What a horrible day? I know how they feel. However, my mother-in-law coddles her son. I'm just lucky that Adam isn't unreasonable. He always backs me up. Adam, aren't you tired? You should leave the chores to Jade. And relax, right? You're already doing your best at work. We've already decided that we would split the housework. So I'm not going to do that. Oh, you're a lovely boy. How wonderful. Dad, are you watching? Adam's grown up into a wonderful man. It seems he lacks taste in women, but I'll take care of that. My father-in-law passed away a few years ago. Whenever something happens, my mother-in-law always faces the sky and reports it to him. On top of that, she's too sweet on Lucy to the extent that it's almost sickening. Look, some ants are even gathering. Lucy! You're so little and cute! Oh, yes, you are, cutie pie! Grandma, I can't breathe! Oh, your voice is so sweet, too! My ears are going to melt! Like this, she's kind to everyone except me. She likes to bully me. Or rather, she wants to deny my existence. She's horrible. One day when my mother-in-law wasn't around and we were having some family time, we heard some great news. Lucy had passed the entrance exam for Trouble Buster Middle School. Lucy, congratulations! A letter came from Trouble Buster Middle. You got in. Huh? Really? Yes! You worked so hard for it. Good for you. Yeah, I worked really hard. I've never worked that hard before. <laughs> you really did. Shall we go somewhere to celebrate? Where do you want to go? Oh, I want to go to Trubus Hotel. Trubus Hotel is a first-class hotel that often appears on TV. Whenever it came up, she would always mention that she wanted to go. Trubus Hotel? All right, you worked really hard after all. Let's go to Trubus Hotel. Yay! Adam, is it okay to go just the three of us? If we include your mom, it'll cost quite a lot. Yeah, let's keep this between us. She often goes on trips herself, so if we go at the same time, she won't realize. Thank you, honey. One month later, we made our way to Trubus Hotel. Lucy was really excited. She's finally going to stay at the hotel she's dreamed of for so long. I guess it's only natural that she's this ecstatic. Oh, I can't wait! I'm so excited! I can't stop doing somersaults! I get how you feel, but let's walk on our two feet. Then bad news was waiting for us when we arrived at Trubus Hotel. Excuse me, I have a reservation made under the name Jade? Hmm, Miss Jade? Um, I'm sorry, our records show that you cancelled your reservation. Huh? No, I haven't cancelled. The other day, we had a phone call from you saying that you would like to cancel, so the reservation no longer exists. It was last minute, so I mentioned that there would be a cancellation fee, but you said that that didn't matter. Huh? The booking fee was paid up front, so we returned the amount left over after deducting the fee, which was $3,000. $3,000? What's wrong? Can't we stay here anymore? What's going on? We haven't cancelled anything! I'm sorry, but even if you say that, the phone numbers used to book and cancel were the same number. Does anyone else have access to this phone? Anyone else? Could it be? What's up? Do you know who? No, just... I had one person in mind. Hey, can't we stay here? 
Lucy seemed so disappointed. She was so excited about finally staying here. I'm sorry, Lucy. We ended up staying in another hotel for that night. Lucy accepted it, saying that we had no other choice. She's such a good girl. But it only made me sad. She must be so shocked. Who could have done this? I'll never forgive them. Time for the trouble busters. The night we returned from our trip, I thought about why our booking might have been canceled. I have an idea of who might have done it, but I didn't know how. My mother-in-law called out to me. You're sitting around again. If you have time, do some housework. I was just thinking. I'll do it right away. That's why you can't stay at a fancy hotel like that. Huh? Why does she know that? Adam said he wouldn't say anything. It was her after all. Sorry? Why do you know that? You might have been planning on enjoying a relaxing trip to a hotel all by yourself, but I won't let you. So you're the one that canceled the hotel. Yes, it was me. It turned out that my mother-in-law was opening my desk drawers on a regular basis and found the ticket to the hotel there. She found out that I was planning a trip. She wanted to see me suffer and notified the hotel of the cancellation. I can't believe she was nosing through my desk. I didn't realize. She's the worst. I wondered why my photo frames were moving. It makes me happy to see you upset. You must have been really disappointed. <laughs> You're horrible. It's because you were trying to stay in it all by yourself. It's your own fault. Huh? What? She found the ticket and assumed that I was planning to go by myself. The second I tried to correct her mistake, Lucy entered the room ever so slowly. Grandma? Oh, Lucy, what's wrong? Is all of that true? Yeah, it's true. Jade was trying to stay in a fancy hotel without telling you all. That's why Grandma punished her. Lucy's breathing became erratic and she took in a lot of air before shouting. I hate you, Grandma! What? Why? Why would you do that? I was looking forward to it! You were going to stay, huh? What do you mean? We were going to stay, all three of us! I hate you! Get out! My mother-in-law finally understood the gravity of her actions. No matter how much she tried to ask Lucy for forgiveness, Lucy's anger didn't die down. My name is Rath! I'm the epitome of anger! Even after a few days, Lucy was still angry. Adam also told his mother that it was her own fault. Nobody could defend what she had done. Furthermore, another incident became the straw on the camel's back. Lucy, what can I do to get you to forgive me? I won't forgive you! I'm not just angry about the hotel, you know! Huh? What do you mean? You're always bullying Mom! I hate that about you! I can't take it anymore! I don't want to look at you! Lucy! My mother-in-law ended up leaving the house. She must have gotten really depressed after being told that by Lucy. She walked out of the door, smaller than ever. That's what you get! You should feel some regret. Yeah. Mom was really harsh on Jade, after all. I was wondering what to do. But Lucy sorted everything out for us! We went on holidays once more. Our destination? Trobus Hotel. This time we had no problems, and... The lady at the reception remembered us and felt bad for what had happened the previous time. So we were given a meal with no charge. 
We were able to spend our time with no worries at all. Three months later, Lucy advanced to Troublebuster Middle and became a middle school student. My mother-in-law sometimes visits, but Lucy is still giving her the cold shoulder. But her attitude towards me had shockingly changed 180 degrees. Jade, your cooking is so much better. And your hair looks lovely. I haven't done anything to it, though. It's so different, it's creepy. But I'll let it be. Watching my mother-in-law, I swore one thing. I swore that I would never become a monster-in-law like her. Even if Lucy gets married, I'll make sure to get on well with my daughter's partner. <laughs> Trouble busters. Hi, I'm Lucy. I may not look like it, but I own a high-class steak restaurant. I'm the owner, but I rely on the manager, Adam, and the staff to run the restaurant. I only have to look through the documents and give the final approval, so it works much easier. Because I'm the owner, I often invite friends and family to eat and sometimes give them discounts even. However, I have one big problem when it comes to giving out discounts. This is Sheila, a friend of mine. She takes advantage of me being the owner and makes ridiculous requests. Mmm, the meat at your restaurant is the best, Lucy! I'm sorry I brought so many friends on one go. I'm glad that there are a lot of people that like our food. Whoa, the smell of your perfume is stronger than the smell of the meat. <laughs> You're all still really hungry, right? Let's order more meat! Are your stomachs ready? Yeah! What is this, a concert? How many servings would you like to order? Well, I guess 20 should be enough. Huh? Can you eat that much? Our restaurant is working to prevent food loss. It'll be troublesome if any food is left uneaten. It's okay, if we can't eat it all, we'll put it in Tupperware and take it home. Again with the Tupperware. Sheila, you're always taking meat home in Tupperware, aren't you? Your family must really love meat. Love it. I love meat. Don't we love meat? The audience is looking forward to me bringing home meat too. Uh, audience? You mean your family? Wait, are your family waiting for you to come home before they start eating dinner? That's right. They're all waiting for the best hits of the meat. You're making them wait too long. And stop depending on us for meat. My biggest worry is Sheila is taking home meat in her Tupperware. It's not bad and it's not a crime, but she always takes the leftovers home with her. No, she always orders more than she can eat on purpose and takes home what's left. Like she's at a friend's barbecue. I always thought. She's so stingy, she must be from Planet Stingy or somewhere. By the way, when the bill comes, this woman from Planet Stingy always says, You're going to give us a discount, aren't you? Uh, understood. I'll give you 10% off. A bit more? 11%? Oh, so that's your tactic. Alright, I'll let you off this time. I don't want to hear that from you. What are you, a thief? At first she only came once a month, but she gradually came more often twice a month, once a week, and then twice a week. Before I knew it, she was coming to eat three times a week and she was slowly gaining weight, too. Sometimes she'd even come by herself. I've heard that solo camping is a la mode right now, but eating by herself just to take the leftovers home? can't forgive her. Sheila! Hi, Lucy! You've got a lot of good meat today, too! I can tell! Today's meat is especially tasty! You're a professional when it comes to my restaurant now, aren't you? 
I'm very happy that you're always coming to eat, but it's not good for your health if you have such an unbalanced diet. I feel like you've sized up a bit since we met. That's not true. You shouldn't say that to a lady. Moo. You're even starting to sound like a cow. But perfect timing. I'd like to order 15 more. Sheila, I'd like you to order an amount you can eat. What? My son and husband are at home, starved and waiting for me to bring meat home. They're my audience. I want you to prepare the most expensive meat you have in the house. We're friends, right? Wait, wait. That's going too far. Why don't you make them dinner yourself once in a while? I can't give you a discount so frequently. It's not fair to the other customers. Fair? What? Are you saying I'm in the way? I haven't said that. I'm just saying I'd like you to reduce the number of times you visit the restaurant. I'm supposed to be your audience. How could you say that? Moo. Don't get all high and mighty just because you're the owner. Moo. I'm sorry, but as a business and an owner, I can't allow this to go any further. Business my ass. Fine, I won't bother to come here anymore. So give me 15 more plates. Understood. Hmm. I'm never coming here again. Thank you, God. After mustering up the courage to warn Sheila, she finally stopped coming to the restaurant as often as before. She only appeared once every two months. We all lived happily ever after. Hang on. I thought she was saying she would never come back. Well, I was finally relieved, and I was thinking that I could continue as owner without any worries until... One day I got a call from Adam, the restaurant manager. Lucy! Is something wrong? How is the new addition to the menu going? Yeah, it's selling really well! The pie tastes great! Anyway, Sheila's been coming to the restaurant less frequently these days, right? Well, she's made a complaint saying that her entire family has suffered from food poisoning. Huh? F food poisoning? Could you come to the restaurant straight away? Sheila stormed into the restaurant like a Spanish fighting bull. She's really angry. Understood. I'm on my way. Everything was going crazy. It's time for the trouble busters. My children and my husband have all got food poisoning. What's wrong with the meat here? I'm very sorry. I'm sorry I made you wait. Sheila, I heard about the food poisoning. That's right. I'm going to report this to the police, too. As well as how you made me reduce the number of times I visit. This is all your fault. All right. Well, I have something I want to ask you. Is the meat you took home really the same as the meat you had left over after cooking it at your table? What are you talking about? The meat we handle in this restaurant is very high quality, so as long as you didn't eat it without cooking it, you shouldn't have gotten poisoned. I've already checked with the provider I buy the meat from. I've already confirmed that there's no problem on our end. Then I'm sure it was because you weren't handling the meat properly. Well, recently I've been hearing from Adam that we've been missing some raw meat. So? That just means that your management is to blame after all. Sheila, you haven't been taking raw meat from the kitchen and putting it in your Tupperware, have you? What? Of course I would never do that! The raw meat we have in this restaurant is stored in a particular way. Once it's taken out from its storage, it needs to be cooked right away or you'll suffer from food poisoning. If you were to leave it in Tupperware for a while, you're done for. I know that! <laughs> On top of that, one of our part-timers is missing. You didn't put him in your Tupperware too, did you? That's a definite no! Ever since you filed a complaint about the food poisoning, our one member of staff went AWOL. We can't get through to his phone. You got on pretty well with him, I remember. Don't you know anything? Of course not! Then I guess we'll have the police investigate for us, since we have a camera in our kitchen. What? Just like you say, if we get cooperation from the police, we can get them to search all over the restaurant and check your Tupperware. We'll know exactly who's to blame. 
Are you really sure you didn't take any raw meat home? Uh... By the way, here's today's bill. Huh? You ate even though you made a complaint? You're really something. Let's see... What? F five... Five thousand dollars? Please, pay up. Haven't you notched it up one digit by mistake? Even five hundred dollars would be expensive. What is this? Five thousand dollars is the total worth of the raw meat you've stolen from us up until now. If you pay up, I'll forget about all of this. Don't get so angry. You're too worked up. I think my anger is well done. Do you acknowledge what you've done? If you do and pay up, I'll let you off the hook. Crap. I'm sorry. I stole your meat. Thought so. I knew something was odd. I guess you partnered up with one of the employees. I was lying about there being a camera in the kitchen, but don't even think about covering up what you did. What? A lie? Yes, we don't have CCTV. I was just bluffing. We were in danger of letting you cover everything up because of lack of evidence. Don't give me that! Like hell I'll acknowledge that I did any of that! What? I'm not paying $5,000. I regret feeling guilty. I'm never coming here ever again. Huh? <sighs> I bet she'll be back in no time. But it seems like she really did steal the meat. I guess we'd better contact the police. Yes, ma'am! We requested the police to investigate, and thanks to the testimony made by the staff that went AWOL, Sheila and her partner in crime were arrested for theft and other crimes. The other employee had noticed the part-timer going over to speak with Sheila without any clear reason, like making an order. Fortunately, I was able to use it in my bluff. I'm glad it worked. I had made Adam keep an eye on the movements of that particular employee, and just as he was about to question him, Sheila arrived and made complaints. We only managed to be successful because we had a general idea of what was going on. It turns out that Sheila and that employee were having an affair. She was making him bring her raw meat, and she would put it in the Tupperware and take it home. The employee wasn't in charge of the kitchen, so I guess he didn't know that the raw meat would cause food poisoning. How thoughtless. Apparently, Sheila's family is quite large, and the grocery expenses were racking up. That was why she began to use my restaurant as a means for food. Sheila was arrested and her husband filed for divorce. No wonder. But I did learn one thing from Sheila. I decided to introduce Tupperware into our system. It's better to have customers take home their leftovers rather than having to dispose of it. At first, it might seem stingy, but it could actually make it a difference. Overdone stinginess is pathetic, but some stinginess is necessary. That's what I learned. Trouble Busters. My name is Akashi. I'm a single guy in my 30s with a slightly unusual job. I'm a descendant of the famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Just kidding. I run my private detective agency specializing in affairs and background checks. However, I'm new in the business, so I don't really have a lot of cases to solve yet. One day, while I was preparing for the next request, I heard a knock on the door. Yes! Coming! I wonder why they knocked. They could have just used the intercom. Huh? There's no one there. Down here! Whoa! You scared me! Where are you from? Are you in grade school? My name is Ryuto Maruyama. Five years old. I'm of the rabbit group of Buster's Kindergarten. Kindergarten? Where are your parents? Are you lost? No! Uncle, does your work involve searching for something? Uncle? What a day. Uh, 
No, no. Nothing. You're right. That's my job. But how did you know? Your flyer was in the mailbox. The kindergarten bus stops here, so I knew. Come to think of it, a kindergarten bus stops here every day. The kids in the bus waved at me, so I waved back. I see. So you're one of them. Um, I have a favor. I will pay you. Hmm? Are you looking for something? It's about my mom. Um, my mom goes out with a man I don't know. What? While mom is away, I stay at home alone. Mom told me with a scary tone that I should never tell about her going out. S seriously That's why I didn't tell dad. But it's wrong to tell a lie, right? I'm taught at kindergarten that it's wrong. So I want to tell dad. I want you to look for my mom and that man. I see. I'm sorry. But I think it would be difficult to bring both of them to your father. I see. But I can take pictures of your mother and the man together. Because that's my job! If you hand that picture to your father, he'll most likely believe you. And you won't have to lie to your father. Y yes please It's difficult for me to lie to my dad. Okay. Leave it up to me. Will you tell me your contact number? Yes. Mom will find out if I use our telephone number, so here's my phone number. You have your phone? Are you using the Line messaging app? You're using Line? Am I really old? Maybe I shouldn't be taking requests like this from a child. But I know how it feels like to be forced to lie and take one of my parents' sides. I sent Ryuto home. Went back to the office and started working right away. The only clues I had were Ryuto's mother's name and one family picture. So in the meantime, I investigated social media. When I searched with his mother's real name, I saw an account on Facebook. From there, I was able to specify her hobbies and the places she frequents. When I investigated further, I found an account on Instagram uploading the same pictures. The name is Lonely Bunny. Very different from her real name, but based on the pictures and the captions posted, it was almost identical. Then I found a man who seemed close to her and commented on her Instagram post. So I investigated that account as well. It took me a day and a half to understand their patterns. I kept staking out the place with almost no sleep. And finally, I caught them together. I was able to take pictures of them holding hands. And a decisive photo of them going to the hotel! With enough evidence on hand, I contacted Ryuto. I will never forgive them! Trouble busters! Ryuto, do you have time? I got a picture of your mother and the stranger. Really? Yes. You can show this to your father, but I started to doubt. Even though this is Ryuto's request, is it really right to do this? Wouldn't this result in the taking away of Ryuto's mother? Won't Ryuto regret this later on? However, Ryuto's mind was set. Can I go with my dad next Saturday? Yes, of course. Okay, with this, I don't need to lie to dad anymore. Thank you. I'll be waiting for you tomorrow. The next day, with mixed feelings, there was a knock at the door. When I opened the door, little Ryuto and his father, who looked like he was the same age as me, were standing there. I'm sorry to bother you. Um, did Ryuto really request you? I will discuss that in detail as well. Please take a seat. Hmm. Once again. I'm Detective Akashi. Ryuto came here yesterday and requested me. Um, Dad! Did you know that Mom has been going out with a stranger lately? What?! I'm sorry I didn't tell you all this time. His mother forced him not to tell you. Seems like she left Ryuto home alone and went on dates. Ryuto said that he didn't want to lie to you anymore. 
So he came here to get evidence so he can tell you. Evidence? This contains the photos I took of them. Please don't show it to Ryuto, as it contains adult content. This is... This is my wife's ex-boyfriend. I know him. Really? Actually, I felt something was strange. She's been turning me down at night, and she's been out overnight. I've been busy at work, so I wasn't able to examine it in detail. But I'm surprised that this kid was able to do this. Are you mad? Why? Because I did this without your permission. As for that, it's my responsibility. Please don't get mad at Ryuto. My father's also a bastard, and he used to disappear with his lover at times. That's why I didn't think of him as a stranger. Really? Thank you very much. There are trustworthy people in this world, but there are also bad people who deceive children. I'm going to give a stern talk about that. But putting that aside... Dad... Ryuto, your mother probably won't come home anymore. I promise to make you happy. So you won't be lonely, even when your mother's not around. Will you be alright even if it's just the two of us as a family? Dad, I'm sorry. I have one more lie. I met that person before. What? At that time, Mom asked me if I was fine with having him as my new dad. I didn't want him to be my dad. I want you as my family. I'm not lonely at all. I love you, Dad. Ryuto, thank you very much. Uncle, thank you for taking those pictures. I received this money as a gift last Christmas. I'm giving it all to you. You don't have to do that, Ryuto. Let me pay for this. I can't take this for free after all you've done for us. No, this time, I was purely helping you. I was raised by my single mother and had a hard time, but... I still have a good relationship with my mother, and I love her. I'm sure Ryuto loves you too. That's why I'm telling you. Please live with him. Ryuto, keep that money, okay? Go buy a toy or something. Uncle, thank you. I like you. After that, Ryuto's parents got divorced. Of course, his father got custody of him. They had a huge fight and his mother denied paying alimony. She acted like she was the victim until the end and demanded custody. She really does have a very thick skin. His dad fought hard and received alimony. Custody of Ryuto and child support. His mother was a housewife, so the alimony paid was not that much, but... Ryuto's father was very happy to get custody of him and sent me a message. They're now enjoying a happy life together. There are times when I receive pictures of them both smiling wide. I'm glad that I took Ryuto's request that time, instead of sending him away because he's a child. Trouble Busters! My name is Akashi. I got engaged to Miyu, who's two years younger than me, so we're going to meet each other's parents. First, we were going to meet her parents. So we drove for two hours to her house. It's All Souls Day, so we visited her ancestors' graves first and prayed for success. While we were in the car, Miyu told me, My dad is a bit weird, but don't mind it, okay? I had no idea what she meant, but... I wanted to make a good impression on the parents of my beloved Miyu. Mom! Dad! I'm home! Welcome home, Miyu! Pleased to meet you. I'm Akashi. Ah, is this your boyfriend? Dad, he's a person. Don't address him with this. He's Akashi, my boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. Darling, is the food ready? Yes, yes, it's ready. Bring out my bourbon, too. Sure, sir. Don't drink too much, okay? I had a good impression of her frank and rough father. And her calm mother, but... Little did I know that I was about to be shown what Miu meant. Before the meal, I gathered up the courage to ask for their blessings to marry their daughter. Mr. and Mrs. White, before the meal, I would like to tell you something. Go ahead. 
Please give me your blessings to marry your daughter. I will really do it. Hmm. You will really do what? Marry her. You forgot to mention you'll make her happy. Uh, I'm sorry. I was so nervous. <laughs> so, are you going to make her happy or not? I will definitely make Miu happy. Okay, got it. Now, let's eat. I felt relieved that I easily received their blessings. Then, we commenced eating the palatable dishes prepared by Miu's mother. They asked us a lot of questions like how we met and our dates. Miu and I responded to their questions, despite feeling embarrassed, but... I noticed that her father was becoming drunk. At first, it was humorous, so I didn't think about it much, but... Her drunk father's personality suddenly changed. Akashi! Why aren't you drinking? Um, I have an alcohol allergy. I'm sorry. Alcohol allergy? What's that? That sounds out of this world! You came to ask for our daughter's hand in marriage, but you won't even drink alcohol? Um, as I've explained, I'm allergic to alcohol. I'm really sorry. Are you saying that you can't drink alcohol with me? Allergic? You're just making excuses. You'll get used to it after drinking, so drink! No, please! It's really bad if I drink alcohol. I'll fall! You're exaggerating, Akashi. I can't believe youngsters are so weak that they'll even make excuses like alcohol allergy. Dad, Akashi is really allergic to alcohol. <laughs> I won't let someone who can't even drink alcohol to my daughter. You can't even share a drink with me. But... Right, what are you saying, Dad? <laughs> You're the ones at fault. I won't give your marriage my blessings! Go away! I panicked because I offended Miu's father for not drinking alcohol. However, seeing me baffled, Miu's mother defended me. What are you saying? Akashi came with Miu all the way here to meet us! Shut up! I'll never allow someone like him to be my son-in-law! Huh! Miu and Akashi, don't mind him. Her mother said. But I came to ask for their blessings, so there's no way I'm giving up. Mr. White, will you please give us your blessings somehow? Possible. Drink if you want to be accepted. Well, I guess you can't do it. I thought of different ways to get through this, but... I felt like I was overwhelmed by his intimidating aura. By the way, I got hives just with disinfected alcohol for sterilization. The alcohol used before an injection is too strong for me, too. And I can't eat food cooked with alcoholic beverages. There's no way I can drink alcohol! But what should I do to receive his blessings to marry his daughter? That's when it happened. Hey! How about at least a sip? You might just be fine! If you want to be accepted, drink! Uh, I can't- Dad, stop it! He brought the drink closer to my mouth, and bourbon dropped into it. My first alcoholic drink tasted intense. Tasty or not, it didn't matter at all. It tasted like concern. Concern at the risk of one's life. Hey, Akashi, you can drink after all! One more glass! Uh, I can't! Huh? <laughs> I had to laugh at his intimidating attitude to fool him. He raged and threw the drink to my face. Everything went silent. Akashi! You son of a- How can you not take one more drink from me? Hey, Dad! What do you think you're doing? Right. What are you doing? Akashi, I'm really sorry. Miu and her mother wiped my face and clothes. Maybe it was because I was drenched in the alcoholic drink. But I got drunk and lost consciousness. When I opened my eyes, I was in the hospital with Miu beside me. Uh, uh, where am I? Akashi, you're awake! I'm so happy! What happened? 
Hakashi, I'm really sorry. It's all Dad's fault. Uh, according to Miu, I was taken to the emergency room because of alcohol intoxication. What's more was that it was so bad that it was a matter of life and death. Seconds after Miu told me what happened, her father came dashing to the hospital. Even though he's her father. Trouble Buster! Akashi! I'm glad you're awake! <laughs> I'm sorry to worry you. Dad! Go away! Who do you think was the reason for all this? Right. But I didn't know that would happen. One wrong move and Akashi would not be here alive. How dare you come here! Mio, thank you. Mr. White, I was drunk, but it was because of you that I almost died. I can't easily forgive you. Hey, Dad. What is it? The moment Akashi opened his eyes, I decided to break relations with you. I can't forgive you! No, to break relations? But you're the reason why Akashi almost died! If he did, I would have followed him. What? Do you understand what it feels like to have a loved one almost die? Miu, but I'm glad that I woke up. Then, Miu's mother arrived. Akashi, I'm glad you're awake. Her mother cried and hugged me the moment she saw me. I apologize for this incident. No, it's fine. I'm sorry to bother you. I can't believe you almost killed this very fine gentleman. I really feel sorry. Mrs. White, don't worry. I will recover soon. I'll get a divorce. I can't live with this man. You're kidding, right? Please forgive me. I think you should, Mom. Thinking of how my father almost killed the person I love, I can't stop shaking. I'm afraid thinking that I married a man who attempted murder. I... I understand. I was wrong. Please, forgive me. I really feel sorry about what I did to you, Akashi. I really thought that alcohol allergies didn't exist. I thought you were just being picky. I'll never do the same thing ever again. I'll stop drinking as well. Of course you're going to quit drinking alcohol. Do you think you'll be forgiven without walking your talk? Mrs. White and Miu, thank you. But I'm glad to be alive and well. However, Mr. White... Allergies can be a matter of life and death if you make one mistake. I just wanted to receive your blessings to marry your daughter. Honestly, I want to drink alcohol. I want to share drinks with you, too. But there are things that just can't be forced. Akashi! I'm thankful to both of you for raising such a wonderful daughter. You might regret divorce and breaking relations. So please think carefully before making any decisions. But I'm not a part of your family just yet, so I won't involve myself in making the final decision. Also, I can't change my mind right away after what you've done. Akashi. Akashi, I'm very sorry. I want you to make my daughter happy. That's all I ask of you. I promise nothing like that will ever happen again. But I can't forgive you yet, Dad. You need to realize and learn from what you've done. I don't want to see your face too. For now, go home. Yes, I'm really sorry. Then he apologized to me. I had mixed feelings when I saw him apologize with tears in his eyes, but Miu and her mother were enraged and drove him out of the room. After that, they got divorced. She couldn't forgive him for what he did to his daughter's fiancé. He desperately asked for forgiveness, but she never gave in. As for Miu, she didn't break relations with him, but she doesn't answer his calls anymore. She didn't oppose her parents' divorce. As for me, I recovered and was discharged from the hospital. Miu and I got married. Now, we're living a happy married life. As for Mr. White, he quit drinking and asked for forgiveness many times. I understand that at the time, he was drunk and his thought process was out of whack, so he acted that way. He's my beloved wife's father, 
I'm all for reconciling with him since he quit drinking. In the end, Miu and I were able to get married, and that's what matters most. Trouble Busters! <laughs>